Hey, it's been a while. Uh, this video is for a problem I've had with uh, wiring something. I'm a self-taught programmer, and I guess I'm in the midst of becoming a self-taught electrician, but I'm not quite there, uh, and as a result, I have caused a little explosion. Uh, so without further ado, let me show you what I've been working on. Whoosh. This, well, uh, that is the Prusa MK3S printer with the MMU2S upgrade. Uh, I put that together recently and have been having mucho fun printing things, as is evidenced by boink, that little tank top. <laughs> tank top. Um, and this is the thing that exploded. Uh, so this is a uh, monstrosity, but it's also uh, a Raspberry Pi for a computer uh, attached to a webcam, uh, which is attached to a relay, a uh, feather wing relay uh, that can handle high voltage. Uh, this is the DC uh, AC-DC power converter that powers the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and there's also a physical toggle switch uh, kind of horribly glued in there. Uh, and also a uh, LED board, which is just don't even look at the soldering and the gluing like uh so <laughs> uh separately these things worked fine um well actually let me backtrack a little bit the whole reason for this thing is uh they have this server called octoprint and uh it's wonderful because it allows you to control your 3d printers uh remotely and Initially, I used a Raspberry Pi Zero uh, to control it, and it works fine. Uh, the only problem is if you want to incorporate a webcam, it doesn't work fine. Uh, it just doesn't have enough horsepower uh, to really accomplish it. I suppose it, it can, but uh, like the frame rate is terrible, and yeah. So many people, in fact, many people, including the uh, developers of Octoprint, or developer of Octoprint, I'm not sure if it's a group thing. I think it is. But anyways, they recommend not using the Zero. So uh, I upgraded to the Raspberry Pi 4, which is wonderful, uh, and have been able to control the printer just fine. Um, but I wanted everything to be in a nice tight package, so that's where that comes in, um, that being the, the thingy. So what the problem is, uh, is separately these components work fine. Um, I'm able to have the relay go on and off, um, toggle the lights on and off remotely using the Raspberry Pi and the relay. Um, and I'm also able to turn on and off the lights with the switch. However, when I wired them both together, uh, I was still able to turn on and off the light using the, the physical switch. Uh, however, when I tried to turn uh, on and off the light using the relay while the switch was set to off, nothing happened. And when the switch was set to on and I tried to use it, uh, something exploded and popped uh, and there was a smell, although no uh, visible, visible, visible scorch marks. Uh, so it was something small. Uh, I haven't been brave enough to turn it back on uh, since, the, since the explosion. Um, I'm guessing it has something to do with me not paying attention in my middle school uh, science class about circuits in parallel and in series. Uh, I did not make a circuit diagram or anything before wiring this thing up. As you can see, I've used household uh, cable or electrical cable. I forget what it's called. Coax? No, not coaxial. Menex? I don't know. It has a name. I have a big spool of it because I'm doing the house electric. Um, which, by the way, quick question to anyone in the know. These are solid core wires, and they are not good at fitting into tight spaces like that monstrosity that I built. Um, how do I figure out what size braided uh, cable I can use? Like, you know, obviously I don't want it to be too thin, right? Because then the resistance goes way up and it could melt the cable. So I'm pretty sure... Um, you know, these aren't 
stranded cables. They're, they're solid core, but at least I think they are. Uh, but they're super teeny. And, you know, it'd be wonderful if I could use this, but something tells me that using this with, uh, you know, a household electrical current would probably be a bad idea. So if someone can let me know something similar to this that can handle a household uh, electrical current, that would be great because it would really allow me to burn my house down a lot faster. And uh, as I said before, I didn't make a circuit diagram. Uh, I have now. And I'm going to put this probably online uh, with this video and post it to like the electrician subreddit just so people can tell me how I'm an idiot. And that's it. So um, I have links in that diagram to the actual products I used. Um, I don't know. I assume the diagram is correct, but uh, if you're able to see here, if I've drawn anything incorrectly in this horrible tangled nest of wires, please let me know. Um, not that that's probably going to help you very much. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening to this long-winded diatribe, um, and hopefully um, you can help me out. Thanks.